good, everybody? It's your man, Legacy the Prince. I am CEO Aaliyah. It's your boy, DJ B4EY. Yes, sir. It's the Fresh Leftovers radio show, man. Yes, sir. Flowradioshow.com. You know the vibes. We live and certified, baby. We got a special guest in the building. Okay, 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 crazy, okay, okay, I don't even know okay, where to start. Okay, okay. That's a long, no, I'm just that's several like, paragraphs. I don't, even, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. You ain't got to read that. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> Performed alongside <laughs> KB, Big Sean, Travis Porter, Wu Tang, Bone Thugs and Harmony, Twister. Hold on, time out. Stop. Come on now. No, you know that's DJ go. favorite. That's <laughs> DJ, <laughs> DJ, DJ was just getting on my nerves before the group. show started with this with that group. Bone Thugs and Harmony? What are you talking alone, about? Man. You know what I'm saying? He was saying all the words, cussing and stuff, remember? Yeah, he did. I heard it. Oh, the double XL yeah. cover <laughs> had numerous top tens, man. Um, the list goes on, man. Seven-time award-winning artist, uh, two-time hip-hop award-winning artist, three-time award. Man, Jesus. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's a lot. Crazy. Okay. It's a lot. Tongue tied. Tongue tied. I'm bit. trying to tell you, man. Look, man, we got the one and only, the big homie Jay Nib in the building, man. Yes. What's popping, my brother? Man, listen. I'm excited to finally be here. We've been talking about this for a long minute. It's, it's been, been a energy, while. Bro. Yeah, energy. You had a red bull just a second yours ago. Or theirs? Oh, who's it? What? Who's fault? Why he wasn't here yet? Uh, I I would say his uh, manager. His manager. I would say yes. I would say Jay and him because I don't know what they had the conversation about, but I know the conversation between them two. Oh wow, Dang, that's crazy. Yeah. So I don't. Wait, I don't, I don't know who it was. Kind of fast. He's uh, from from the Midwest. Yeah. Ohio. Oh. Yep. Pick one. You talk a little Ohio. fast, don't he? He from East 99. He's 99, 99. Nah, I'm like three and a half hours from there. Oh, God. Yep. That That's way. what's up, man. Yeah. Jay Nib, glad to have you here, man. I'm excited oh, to be oh, here, oh, man. Okay, now, okay, I just want to start okay. off by saying um, congratulations um, for uh, bodying everybody at the Hip Hop Awards. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's start right there. That's where we started. I told him that's where we started. I'm sorry. We're going to start the album. I was like, that's real no, appropriate. I appreciate I'm that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. No, let's start let's there. Let's talk about that. Now, let's start there. Let's go ahead and start there. We'll this get was, to this the testimony in a minute. This was something anticipated, you know? No, this is the second annual. That was the second year. The second one? Of the Gospel Hip Hop Award show. Uh -huh. that, was my, that was my... Sis was oh, on that it. that was my second one. No, that was your first... No, no, it was, no, no this was your first performance. That was the second one. That was my first performance. Yeah. First time performing. Yeah. And um, no disrespect. Straight up, but you were the first one to come out on the, on the um, joint, right? Yeah, for the male hip hop. For the male cypher. hip hop yeah. cypher. Yeah. Bodied everybody. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> JPM, you went off, bro. Afterwards. I'm glad y'all liked it. Afterwards. Legacy. Hit my drop. Nah, that ain't it, y'all. That's what happened. That's what happened with every other That's how y'all feel about all of them? Somebody start lip syncing. Yes. Nice. Like, somebody started lip syncing, for sure. Somebody's, uh, I just didn't think they really gave it their all. Bro, they were horrible. So after you, I was expecting certain things, you know. Okay, I was okay. No, I was just, no, but afterward, you know, you see her perform, like, okay, he about, they about to come with it, you know, if he came with it. But I'm saying, though, I'm just being honest. Because the thing is, you see the list of names on it, which was a great lineup. Oh, yeah, it was a great, great fact, lineup. Pull this up. But it just seemed like everybody else was just. lineup up? Yeah, Let's see if you can get, see if you can pull that up, man. It just seemed like everybody else just didn't. I think they was what too cool to be at the cipher. What did you like, think about the cipher? You? Oh, I didn't like how people went about it. I believe if people would have went about it the way I was trying to help some of them go about it, it would have went a lot better. But I can't also be a voice for them because you know Bruh. they they are going to deliver what they could only deliver. When you so, say when you say they didn't like you were trying to assist. What do you mean by that? As in like the performance wise, because in, in hip hop culture, especially in hip hop out of all music, if you come up there without like show mixes and stuff, people will clown people for going and rapping over lyrics and stuff like that. So that's what I was trying to go and tell them, especially as uh, I even feel like the men, they're going to get it even more because of people just look at them the way people choose to look at men, hip hop artists. Mm. So without them doing that, I feel that also allowed certain people to kind of be even more chill and like kind of even care less because you don't have to be on your P's and Q's enough because you got right. lyrics playing out loud. So it's like, you can kind of be real lackadaisy and if you mess up, it's whatever because the lyrics are still there. So I feel I like mean, it, it makes it, you- That don't even matter though, honestly. The oh, bars yeah, is whack. It, yeah, it, like- yeah. Well, I'm, I'm talking about just on the show mix. The show mix definitely matters. Like if you- no, I'm, talking, lyrics, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the, I'm talking about lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, he asked me just about the part I was okay. the, about part, the part the he was trying to oh, assist okay. with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we're talking I'm about bars and all that. That's on them. I, I can't yeah, say right. bars was, that's on them. That I don't think that was, I don't think that was the best that the artist could have produced or or put out 
as it pertains to the cipher, I feel like it was legacy. I'm about to say something. You're gonna laugh. I feel like it was not. What's the What's the lineup? You found it yet? I'm, I think he took it right off his page. Yeah, dang. <laughs> I'm dead serious. What are you talking about? DJ? I know the. Like I know I'm the, looking I know the for. I see the female on joint on there. Okay, okay, I do not okay. see the. One dude was I on mean, it that that like in in the realm of Christian hip hop. I know a lot of people love him right now. I remember he was on it. You're ooh, talking ooh. about was it um, Emmanuel? Emmanuel yeah. the Prophet. Yeah, I remember he was on it, but I think he only did like. I don't even. He didn't even do a full verse, and he just and he kind of. I don't care who quit. was on it, bro. But that cipher was garbage. <laughs> okay, <laughs> everything Jeez. after your verse was 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 not it. <laughs> Well, I'm I am honored to not like Jay, the Lord Jay, Jay, with my word. Me being able to deliver what y'all liked then. So I'm yes. glad. No, it was I'm definitely good. Was definitely good. But lie. you have a very unique style about you um, when you rap. Like, how'd you get into uh, CHH? Like, were you, well, before that, were you rapping secular before and then got yeah. into CHH? Tell us about it, man. Walk us through it. Yeah, walk me through that. Oh, That's a whole long story, but. Man, we got time. But just, um, so. Ended up starting out uh, making music. Uh, my brother gave me an old stack of CDs, and then the the first uh, CD I actually ever put in was Ludacris, and mm. put it into my radio, and all I heard was "Move, get out the way," and I was like, oh. "I was like, what is this?" <laughs> and because yeah, yeah, yeah. when I was younger, like probably like you know eight, nine, ten years old, I used to always hear like Twista and and other rappers coming down the hallway into my room because my brother would be listening to it in his room. And I always loved, like, you know, the little bit of the beat and the flow I could hear, but then when he gave them to me, that's when, like, I really fell in love with hip-hop. Mm. And um, and then my brother actually did a remix to the Rick Ross song, Hustlin'. And then little brother wanted to be like big brother. I was just like, oh, man. I was like, I want to be that. I want to be that. This is old, old. Yeah, but, throwback, uh, throwback. Yeah, yeah. Sound like you. But, um, but, yeah, so I ended up going and then wanting to be like big brother. I did a remix to uh, them franchise boys, White T. Okay. And then after I did that, I remember I played it for my mom. She was out watering in the garden, and I, I was like, boom, hit play. And she was like, that's good, buddy. Keep practicing. Ah. <laughs> Keep practicing. And then, and then ah. I, ran, I ran back to my room, and I just started filling up notebooks and stuff. And, and like, I would always go down my brother's uh, the hallway, and I'd always just rap and recite, like, 16s to him and stuff. And, like, he would just always just shut me down. He'd be like, nope, you suck. Go away. And I was like, dang. Wow. I'd go hey. back to my room, keep writing, and then I'd go back, rapping down to him. He was like, nope, you're horrible. Get away. <laughs> Every mm. time. And then it was like months. And then one day I remember I went into his room and I was like, bro, I was like, I got another one for you. And then he just didn't even answer me at that time. He just kept playing his game. And then I rapped it to him. And I just, after I was done, I was like, I want to hear what he said. And he was like, that wasn't bad. That was all I needed. I was like, uh, oh, I'm getting closer. Yes. I was like, yeah. oh. And then I, I went back to my room and then I was just super excited and then started writing music. And then um, ended up uh, in high school now at the time, uh, ended up we was at this party and they had like formed this group and stuff. So like I got in the group and like we rapped for a little bit and we all separated and then I ended up coming out my first actual mixtape. And then uh, first mixtape, put it out, um, signed a distribution deal with Universal Records and I was super excited. I was 19, I didn't know nothing about nothing and ended up getting into kind of a bad deal. Mm. And, um, but it, it was, it ended up being cool in the long run. I ended up coming out with my set, uh, second project, went out to Hollywood. We was out there. Um, I was the, the one independent artist on, um, I think it was WJZ at the time in, in Mississippi. It was during the time, y'all remember the song, um, uh, all, all Go to My Chain. Mm. All Go to My Chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was at that time, uh, my song watch. actually came out on the radio, and I was the first independent artist there, or at least at the time, to be the top 10 with all the majors. Uh -huh. And it was at that time, and that was the one song that was number one, and my song didn't pass. But, um, but it was cool, though, because he had, like, you know, national campaign, and I was on two radio stations, and it kept getting requested, and it still got top 10. So I was super hyped. And then that's when the double XL came. And then we was out in Hollywood and I was being around all kinds of folks from the still NWA, DJ Yella and EZ's kids and all kinds of people. Damn. And, and it was a great time. And then uh, and, and that's when I was going and doing all the secular stuff and all that. But it was crazy because along the journey, uh, God would randomly have people come to me and speak to me. Hey, you, you ever thought about making music for God? And like I'm literally just got fresh off the of stage, and this the the <laughs> owner of this club is just buying me shots, and we taking shots at the bar, and all this crazy stuff. And they would come up and say this stuff, and I'd be like, "What?" I'm like, no, that sounds stupid. Get away from me. Wow. And I would turn it down. And um, and then I had another guy. He was like, "Man, you ever thought about rapping for Jesus?" And I was like, "Huh?" I didn't even know it was a thing. I didn't know nobody was no, talking yeah. about God. Yeah, I didn't yeah, know yeah. it was like. Real quick, what, Ron, what year was this? That would have been uh, doo -doo 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 -doo, around two. It, this would have been in, in between 2011 to 2013 okay, okay, when okay, all okay. this, the majority was happening gotcha. of, of stuff really going. And um, 
And yeah, so I did a lot of cool things in, in, in the past life of music, but but God kept trailing on me and, and you know, basically coming to me. And, and I finally ended up going and, and, you know, I really just stopped running. Um, and then I was working with a producer at the time uh, back when he was still living at his house. And now he's one of the knowns. I, and I kept telling him, I was like, man, you're going to be crazy. Everybody going to love you. I'm sure y'all know who he is, uh, Juice Bangers. He's been making beats yes. for everybody now. So mm. me and him, we started working together uh, when he was like, I think like 12 or 13. And um, and then he would just send me beats all the time, and and uh, we just enjoyed each other's chemistry. He loved what I did to his beats, and then um, he told me one day too. He was like, "Man, you ever thought about rapping for Jesus, dog?" And I was like, nice. "And so, so now this all these like, people saved." Yeah. Um. No. So I don't. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Really. I mean, I, at the end of the day, I don't know who's saving who not. Right. Know? Right. That's cool. But um. That's real. But but at the end of the day, he was the closest one that I knew of that was saved because at random times it'd be in bars and clubs and all that. So after he ended up saying that, that was like the last one. And then I ended up moving back home and I ended up finally going to this church that people kept inviting me to. Mm. And then I finally got to this church. And I remember after a while, they found out I was in music. They didn't know how serious it was and all the stuff I was doing. They just thought I was a young kid in music and wanted to get me involved. So I started helping out with the sound. And then I remember one day, uh, my pastor, he was like just going in. It was just a beautiful message, amazing. And he kept staring at me. And I was like, what does he keep looking at? This is super, super old. <laughs> and then, and then uh, he, he called me out one day and he said, Brother Josh, he said, he said, come down to the front of the stairs. And I said, okay. And this was like a Pentecostal church and stuff. So I was just mm. like, ooh, I'm about to get it. Hey, 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 and, hey. And then, so I go I and get, that I, oil. Yeah, I get down to the front of the stairs. <laughs> and then I ended up having like that, uh, that Jeremiah moment when Jeremiah mm. said the fire shot up in his bones, right? Yeah. And as soon as I hit the front of the stairs, I felt it. it like it just hit me. I felt fire just all shoot up in my body. This heat, I just started sweating. And everything in me was like trying to tell me to run. But at the time, my feet was like so planted. It was like I had been running for so long. It was like the run was over. And I remember he looked at me and he said, Brother Josh, he said, the Holy Spirit told me that you were supposed to make a song for God. I was like, bruh. Stop. <laughs> this this no, was man. after those years of what I was telling you. I like how people. you did the voice changes. No, that was yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> but but that, and that, and that's like. And that's what, like, really another one of those times that blew my mind with God because it's like there's no way this dude right. would have known none of this. And um, and then in, in that moment, I remember I made up my mind. I was just like, okay, I said I'll make one. And and what I realized later was that God had to have it come out of a mouth of somebody got respected. You know, all these other people, I was like, y'all where I'm at, you know, y'all yeah. y'all club where I'm at and yeah. stuff. And it was just coming out of mouth, but it was crazy because it was still God choosing to even work through them who was in a in an odd place, but he was still planting those seeds. Because if it would have got to the point where it was just my pastor at that time, the first time, I mm -hmm. probably wouldn't have listened. But wow. now that it was this build up, and then it came from getting watered all these years, and then he got to be the one to water it and see it blossom. You know, mm. that's, why, that's why I tell people, like, we're all like spiritual farmers, right? Yeah. And some of us plant seeds, and then some of us are watering. And then every now and then, we get to see the beautiful time when we actually get to water and we get to see it sprout. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. That's a beautiful moment because it doesn't happen all the time. But but after that, he came down, and uh, he said, I'm going to pray for you. And I remember he went to lay hands on me, and I'd never seen him do it before. He screeched, like, loud. He turned around and ran up the stairs. And I was like... Is it a demon? Get it off. <laughs> I was like, get off me. I was like, don't wait a minute. You're yeah. not done, sir. Yeah. I was like, I was like, take care of it. And and then uh and then so I was just stuck. And I was like, oh my goodness. And then he came down. I remember he put a hand on my head and his hand on my stomach and he started to pray. And um, and every time I remember growing up, I used to see people, you know, fall out on TV and stuff. I always thought that stuff was fake. Yeah. To be honest, I always thought it was fake. You and, fell out, bro. And, and then it happened well, to me. You and, fell. and he started praying, and I remember out of nowhere, my knees started getting weak. And I was like, oh. Oh, this is real. <laughs> and and then my knees started getting weak. And what's crazy that is at this church because later I became the person that did it. When anybody gets prayed for, they usually have somebody come up behind them and hold their back in case they would fall. But there was nobody there for me. And I knew it was oh, meant. Oh, Lord. Oh, but, my God. But it, was, but it was meant for in this moment because I had to fully experience what I was going to experience. Yeah. Because if, if somebody was there, they would have never, like, the pastor started walking me down the whole aisle because my knees started getting weak and everything, and I was trying to stand up. If somebody was right there, I would have never experienced it. And I'm one of them hard-headed people where God, I tell him all the time, like, you got to show me for yeah. real. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You got to so, put me on my back right but it's the thing though i didn't fall because <laughs> because he ended up he ended up saying something whatever he said in prayer and i just felt it just it hit me and what's crazy is that I, I believe later in hindsight when god continued to mature me in the spirit is that i, I actually believe i think i might have received the holy spirit when i was a child 
because you, you know you believe and you read in the word and stuff it talks about when you have faith in god you are sealed then with the holy spirit right yeah so it doesn't have to be all this religious stuff and all that it's right when you believe but i believe when it began to activate even more and then i had uh basically like a realization of really knowing and understanding when he was praying for me it, it was like the fourth of july going off in my entire body you know, not mm. like butterflies, but it was like shooting through my toes, my hands, my fingers, my head, my legs. It was nuts. And then it got to the point where he said something, and then my knees completely buckled. And that gave away. I started falling. And I remember opening up my wow. eyes, and I caught his elbow, and I brought myself back up because I didn't want to fall in front of nobody. But I was going down. Like, I'm going yeah. down. Exactly. <laughs> I leave first round, 20 seconds, I was out. <laughs> but, uh, but in that moment, too, it was crazy because that's when I ended up then speaking in tongues for my first time. Wow. And, and at that, yeah, and at that time, so it say was. Something. Say something, sir. I'll joke. Wow. <laughs> he said, don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit, sir. So I, I, I will play along with you, but I can't play along on that one. He said, that's the one that's unforgivable. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what did he say? I, uh, yeah, see, let it, let it touch you. I'm going to tell you, it's going to get real in here. But nah. so, so we ended up going and um, uh, I ended up speaking in tongues for my first time, and it was amazing. And it was crazy, too, because it was like at that time where it was like, you know, when you're not taught something, there's no way you can just repeat something. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right. And I remember later, um, after I continued that walk, I began to speak scripture that I'd never even read before. Wow. And then later reading it, then I read the scripture. And I was like, wait a minute. I, I said like, that. Yeah, I was like, how did I know that? And, but, uh, but I remember later I was on a fast and I was asking God that. And I was like, how was I speaking scripture before I even read scripture? And then he basically let me know. He said, I am the word. And if I was already in you, it was already in you. Mm. But we just have to have the realization sometimes and allow God to let it be pulled out of us. <laughs> but, you know, if he already the word, the word is already in you. We just go through life a lot of times ignoring the spirit because we too caught up in self and we too caught up in distractions. Yeah. But, but what was dope, though, is after I ended up leaving that day, I was like, okay. I was like, I'm going to make one song, right? And I remember when I began to make that song, it was crazy because it was when I went into my first uh, uh, conscious uh, spiritual warfare yeah. because it, it was wild. I, I remember I started, um, at the time, this job I'd worked at, I started going to like to the job with like absolute like migraines. I couldn't focus. I used to be able to like write a song and make, you know, do whatever in like 20 minutes and be done. And I was spending weeks and weeks trying to get this song done, and it was not coming out. And, and then I got to the point where I was, like, forcing stuff. And mm. then I got my yes and no people. So I would send it to my, you know, my yes and no people. I finally got one out. And they were like, ah, they were like, it just don't sound like you. And, and now I was getting upset. I was like, what you mean it don't sound like me? It's me. And, and then come to find out, it was like a beat that I had already just used, like, because my mind was, like, gone. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and then what I realized later is I remember I was like, yo, I was like, why is this battle so crazy on me? And then what I realized and what God showed me was it wasn't over my soul. It was because of all the souls God was going to reach through me. Mm. And that's what Satan was trying to hold back, you know. Yeah. And, and it always reminds me of the story of, you know, when, when Jesus went across the sea and found a man called Legion, you know. Yeah. And, and a lot of times people don't end up preaching the second part, but they went and ended up going and, you know, Jesus got the, all the spirits out of him, right? Yeah, yeah. And then not only was the man free now, no longer crazy, and the demons was gone, you know, went into the pigs and all that, and then that's usually the thing ends. But what was amazing is that Satan wasn't after that man just to go after that man. He was after that man because of the purpose that was placed in that man. It said later that man ended up then taking over 10 cities with the gospel. Facts, facts. So Satan wasn't after one person. He was after 10 cities Worth to not people. be able to go and get them saved. And you go and think about 10, he was after Decatur, Atlanta, Stonecrest, all, and all those thousands and thousands of people in it. So that's why people got to realize is that your purpose is so much greater than you. It's beyond you. It's beyond cities. And you got to realize and think, like, how many cities you got in you? You know, how many oh. countries, how many continents? And I know I got continents in me. Oh. So I ended mm -hmm. up going and breaking through really what ended up being was finally that spiritual battle broke away. <clears throat> and then it was weird because I... After I experienced that, I shared with people, like, there's, like, this wall in our mind that we got to break through in life. And one side is darkness and one side is light. It's like God said, we born into a sinful world and, you know, mm. we automatically take on the nature. So yeah, yeah. eventually you got to break down this wall. And that wall on the dark side ends up being, you know, terrible family members, bad friends, depression, anxiety, and all these different things. And But it's like as, as you keep going, like 
God said, you resist the devil, he's going to flee. Mm-hmm. And eventually you end up breaking down that wall with having faith and continuing to pursue and be persistent. And it was like the wall finally cracked open and it was like then the light shined on me. Yeah. And it was like this breakthrough in my mind where I was finally able to finally make a song now. Yeah. And it was like out of nowhere, I remember I got to the point where I actually quit music completely. I remember I was staring at the ground one day and I said, God, I said, if this is what it is, I said, I don't want it. I said, I'm done. And I gave up. And in that moment when I gave up, yeah. When I felt like my fire, like the flicker, like flick on deep down in my stomach. And I remember I looked up at the mic and then I got up and I wasn't really like a, a prominent singer, but I got up and I started singing and freestyling for the for the first track and it was surrender and that was the name of the song was surrender i freestyled the hook and i was like yo and then i just wrote the verses like super quick and then put it out and then it was after that it was like back to like songs and 20 minutes and all that but now it was for the righteous side and and then what i ended up realizing was that the the gift that god had given me was it wasn't just meant to go and do this for one song the gift that i had been excelling in everything in life was the gift that was supposed to be for him period and then i ended up going soon after that and then dedicating it all to him and you know basically just repenting and being like dang i did not know that that's really what it was all about and I ended up going and then, like I said, dedicating it to him and saying, you know, for now on after that, my whole entire life and music and all that was going to be for him. And I remember I just felt from the top of my head all the way down to my feet, just like, it felt like almost of like you were standing underneath a waterfall, just like everything just rushed off of me. Yeah, yeah. And then it was a couple of weeks after that, I had to accept the, the preaching and speaking one, two, and then all that came off of me and stuff. So then I knew I was finally in my own lane of where I was supposed to be. And, um, but that is how you know, in gist of uh, the secular realm became the spiritual realm and then the, or yeah, the spiritual realm of, you know, actually repping God into music and uh, stepping into this side. So that was your first initial question. Yeah. So (laughs) I was going to ask you, so, um, like, are you doing this full time? You doing music full time right now? I get paid from music. Yes, but it's not what I'm able to do and cover all bills just yet. So I got, I got several streams of income that I use and then the goal is by the end of this year with this new album that I got out to be uh, finally a full time completely independent musical artist funded by the kingdom of heaven so how does that how does being an independent artist uh, you know how, do, how does that look for you and what do you what kind of moves do you make and things of that nature what it looks like for me is freedom what I tell people in my business that I got and other artists that I help out is independence is major Mm -hmm. And not having to be on a major label, but independence is major because you don't have to answer to anybody but God if you're repping God in your music. And you have complete freedom to make the type of music you want. You have the type to set up your own tour. Now, it takes a lot of work, but you set up your own tours. You you go and you, you know, you got full creative control and you're allowed to do what you want when you want, release when you want, but just make for sure you go about it smart. And that's where I try to help the artist out about. But but that's the way I see it is, is that independence is major and you don't have anybody, you know, forcing you to make music or telling you to make music about this because I'm always open for for critiques and I'm always open for suggestions. But I never want to go and take the gift now of all what I've been through and then take steps back and then go back to having people trying to order me and tell me what to do unless like contracts were right and I have mm-hmm. full, complete, 100 percent creative, you Great know, creative control. ability and nobody can, you know, force me to do anything under contractual agreements or any of that so that's the way i look at it it's complete freedom so being independent it takes a lot like you said it before yeah do you have a team behind you that like basically kind of helps you out with this i mean outside of the people that you kind of just send the music to get your critiques from or just get feedback Mm -hmm. it takes a lot of work as an independent artist i mean even with finances you know trying to promote and push things and buy new equipment things of that nature how are you holding up like that? Like, what's, what's, what does your team look like? Or what do you think a team should look like to help out? So my team is very small, but mm. it has been a time of, of prayer and being patient and being consistent and allowing God to bring in the people and then to remove the wrong people. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes the right people can come, but then sometimes you keep those people for longer than what you were supposed to do. Mm. So people come in, like as they say, you know, seasonal or for a lifetime or for a purpose or for a reason. And so now, like one of the main only people I really work with is Mr. Jay Williams over here. And oh, it's one of the one of the people that I've actually gained to to trust in everything. But 
but other people um like sometimes i'll have certain other people work with me um when it regards to certain issues where if i can see where they're strong at or their strengths are mm. and that's one thing that i've had to learn is is you don't ever have to worry about changing people pray for people let god change them but view them for who they are and find their strengths and then allow them to use you like i got this one person in my life that it, it's sad i pray for them all the time but they are majority uh predominantly a negative minded person and i'm a complete polar opposite i'm super optimistic about everything mm. like when i start a business all the business that i've started i automatically think success and and that's why they succeed and i know yeah. they succeed i uh, other people they think of ah oh, and they get scared and they're scared of the failure part yeah. well i i go forward and then when those come i deal with it and then i find the successful way to go about it mm. but this certain person in my life they're very negative so a lot of times i don't worry about changing that person i use that person to the ability that i know i can so after i go and formulate a plan or i got these ideas i'll go and ask this certain person if it's something that i know that will be beneficial for me to do yeah i'll shoot it over to them and then i know without a doubt they're going to find the negatives that i didn't see because mm. they're just automatically mm. prone. Using it. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's good. They're, they're automatically prone to find the negatives and stuff. And then I'm able to see, like, okay, that's crazy. That's silly. That's whack. Okay. And they're like, oh, okay. I didn't think about that mm. one. And then I can pray on that and then go about that. Mm. So I, I believe like that. that's how yeah, everybody, that's yeah, that's how everybody from, from any type of bu uh, um, uh, business, rather it's music to any other type of entrepreneur standpoint, is that you. You have to have the strength of being able to allow God to use you walking with That's discernment. So and yeah. when you're walking with this discernment, you're able to see the people that you need in your corner that you need around. Or sometimes the people are already there. Again, you just have to be able to see them and know how to use them. Because a lot of people think, oh, I ain't got, you know, I can't use none of these people because this person, like, well, like I said, this person is always negative. Nobody usually wants to use that person. Right. Right. But when you get the right mindset and you understand, oh, wait, they actually have strengths that I didn't think about, you know? So we got to always look at things in the spirit and not just be all fleshy. That's really good. I never, I never hey. thought about it from that perspective. <laughs> all right, so I, I, I got to go find some negative people. Uh, nah, this is the thing. Like, <laughs> you don't, this is the thing. Wow. You don't, you don't have to minute. find negative people. <laughs> they're there. Yeah, they're, they're, they're already there. Oh, you got to find, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I, I got a question for you. In your bio, you spoke about uh, having to overcome uh, like stereotypes, right? Yeah. Now, do you did you feel a need to prove yourself as a lyricist um, in a predominantly you know hip hop based culture? Mm -hmm. Did you feel the need to have to like prove that? And also, did you feel that same um, did you feel that same feeling getting into CHH as well? When mm. I very first started out with music um, in the hip hop realm of actually going out and, and doing shows and traveling and touring. Uh, yeah, everybody, because I just happen to have the lighter skin in the room, uh -huh. folks would automatically... I didn't notice. Um, yeah, fo <laughs> folks would automatically, um, you know, I believe, every not everybody, but but a lot of folks struggle with that ignorance mindset of you know, uh -huh. being racist and all this stuff. So so it, it's, it's silly, and I got a whole show we can talk about that and bring truth to it. But, yeah, yeah. but a lot of places I would go to, uh, people would never believe that, that I was a rapper. They'd always be like, oh, so what, you, you a producer? It, it would always <laughs> be anything else, Outside but you can't do this. It was, uh. and, and I met a lot of people where it was like, oh, no, like you, uh, it, it, they gave the vibe of like you can't do it or like you shouldn't do it or because mm. you're not allowed to do it. And I'm like, huh? And then I'd get up there and then they'd hear me and then I'd get off the stage and be like, yo, yo, what was your name again? And, stuff? and then they want to. No, we got to connect, man. Yeah, we got to connect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they want yeah, yeah. to work with me and all that stuff. But it was just the, the, the first initial judgment of, mm. of getting out there at first before anybody, you know, any knew who I was from anywhere. And, but that's how it always was at first. And then, um, and then even going into this realm, you know, and stuff. I mean, it's, it's like that wherever you go because of ignorance and evil lives in a lot of people. And it all goes back to the mindset. It's always an internal thing, a spiritual thing. It's never an outer thing. Yeah, it just yeah. happens to be that the internal ends up going and painting the picture for your external. Yeah. But, but what's crazy is that when, when you get in the mindset now, like what you just said, like, oh, yeah, I didn't even notice this stuff. I really don't ever really notice now. Every place I go, um, I never notice, but I would always get other people and be like, hey, you know that uh, you're the only type of person here that looks like you? And then I look around, I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess. You know, it, it doesn't phase me anymore because I've went through it so much. And yeah. like I've continuously always just rose above and, and now I just don't care anymore because I know the gift inside of me that God has given it doesn't have skin. It doesn't have right, anything. Right. It's spirit, and it's a right. gift that God has given me to share to Excellent. everybody. But yeah. too many people, 
Too many people are conformed to the world. As God said, be not conformed to the world, but transformed by the renewing of your, your mind. mind. Uh -huh. Not, you know, changing anything on the outside. It's all on the end. It's and, all that's, on them. and that's why so many people struggle with so much identity stuff and so much everything because they're trying to change on the outer to be able to change the end. But you got to right. change. As I tell people, in order to win, you got to change within. When you change within, that's when everything on the outside works out for you. Mm -hmm. But yes, so yeah, that was a lot of that, but it was just overcoming and just always being genuine to who I am. And when you know who you are, that's attractive to anybody. People are going to hate on it, but the majority are going to love it. And they're going to want to be around you, learn from you, talk with you. Yeah. God, um, that's good. That was really good. I, I really <laughs> I definitely like that, the negative thing. That's cool. You yeah. can use, you can use, the st they still can be effective yeah everybody has the ability to be used sometimes you just got to be able to pull it out of them so with, with, with chh being such a saturated market right now right everybody and their mama jumping up doing chh everybody doing such and such and such right so annoying. Mm -hmm. oh. what like, you know what this question mama. going on huh? yeah yeah i mean it's a two-part question do you consider yourself a chh artist or a gospel hip hop uh, a I gospel rap that artist that that's question number one and then two how does j nib the brand the entity the business owner the artist separate himself in such a saturated market of chh mm -hmm. well first question to you so i can answer effectively what do you determine what is chh and what is gospel who me personally yeah because you asked, I mean, it's, all, asked it's you. all the same thing to me right so that's that's what i think too it's all the same thing again it goes back to i believe the identity issues and a lot of things that humans struggle mm. with and that's why they separate things again it goes back to the it's ignorance and the evil of the mind of why people even have that separated I and like that. It's it the ends separation. up going yeah it ends up going back to a base of what i can't stand and what i go to places and actually try to teach on about this whole skin thing that people got a big issue with and that's what it battles back in into the church into the world into everywhere and once that ignorance and evil is solved straight out of the Bible, which you can find it, and nice, then nice. we can move forward. Because he said, the truth shall set you free. But too many people live in what they're comfortable in and not in truth. They like to live in what things may be true at the time, but they don't live in ultimate truth, which is what will never change. So to answer that question, I think that both of them are the exact same thing. People just separate them for selfish and you know identity reasons and mm. ignorance and evil. But when it comes down to people labeling me, I don't care what people label me. I tell people that all the time. It's like one thing, and I don't want anybody to get this twisted because I know it's a whole big political thing in CHH or whatever you want to call it, is that when God told me to trend, you know, have my thing, it was just about the message I was rapping about that. Yeah had to change it had nothing to do about a genre so it's like when i still fill out everything it's like it's still hip-hop music but when i go out places they'll say oh he a christian hip-hop artist i never tell them oh don't say that don't say that or they'll say oh he a gospel rapper oh i don't say i just take it i'm just like yeah hey yeah, you know yeah, listen yeah. to the music and then other people they'll be like oh man hey he a dope hip-hop artist and stuff because it yeah. also depends on who i'm around church right. people they're always very intense about oh it's got to be this it's got to be christian hip -hop. and then certain people won't even bring you in unless you put that title on mm -hmm. it but what i tell people all the time is don't don't live Live life having to claim a title live your life where people are throwing the title at you mm. because that is how the fruit is always going to be continuing to show in your life because if you fruit. always if you always got to claim a title that's telling you something yeah. but if you're living in a lifestyle and in a way where people are throwing the titles on you that means you are walking in something so i got you a don't i got a question on that what's up um do you still do uh events in the secular like i do events anywhere, anywhere god takes right. me yeah, yeah all right so everywhere. But the message and who I am never changes. So the same way I am at a church event or a yeah. youth event, I'm the same way if I go to a club or wherever. It's so, Jesus, dog. <laughs> no, 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 I get it. So how what's your approach when you're performing real quick? Like like what's my when approach? You, when you're me? walking out on the stage, how how do you how do you just you just go straight in? You mean it's like straight into the set or do yeah, I like talk? Straight or? into the sets, talk. What you um, mean? So again, it's it's just how the Holy Spirit leads me. Sometimes uh -huh. I come out um and I'll start teaching for like 10 minutes before I start like it was just an event I was just at for the um I had a uh what was it a tour date we was just over in Fayetteville mm -hmm. before I even came out I started doing the music I, I sat there and I taught for like 10 minutes before I even did the song but what was cool about it is they gave me the freedom because when you move in the spirit everything's going to be smooth so certain places I go I don't do that I just go straight to the music but if if you're really working to be in discernment let the spirit lead you you're going to come out and it's going to be acceptable to everybody there mm -hmm. So when I was there, I was supposed to be there as the musical artist, but I ended up being there as a teacher and a musical artist. And everybody was engaged from the tiny kids to the very people older in their wisdom years and everybody in between. They was just sitting there and they was hearing stuff that may have been not new, because he said nothing is new under the sun, but right. things that were a fresh or a reminder to them or spoken in a way they never heard before. So 
that is always dependent on the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it'll be a talk and then the music or just the music or a music and then a talk. So the more the story is let the spirit lead you. Yes, sir. Hey. We was talking a little bit about um, you overcoming depression, man. Mm. Yes, sir. What was that whole uh, situation like for you? Not good. <laughs> so, <laughs> Just sum it up. <laughs> so yeah, long right. long story short, um, uh -huh. it was at a time in my life where I ended up moving away from home. Um, I had lived in Columbus for a while, uh, Southwood, and uh, <laughs> we, lived, we lived over there for a minute. It was like we was in the spot where the people from the hood would come over and they'd be like, "Dang, y'all out here living like that." <laughs> yeah, we was we was in the slums, but um. But it was crazy, though, because that is where, like, God really began to, to reach me, you know? It's, it's wild as that, you know, some people have it fortunate, and they grow up as a pew baby, and then some people have it where we hard-headed, and we don't find God until later. And mm. I was one of the ones at the rock bottom where he picked me up. And uh, But it was, long story short, my family had, like, fell apart. Um, people said a broken family, mine shattered. And, uh, like, I was, like, broke and all this stuff. But it was crazy because music was, like, taking off. It was like music was going great, but personal life sucked. And I got to the point where basically everything was just so much. It, it, it was a lot. Like, couldn't get a job for nothing. I was broke. I was stealing from my friend to get food and all this crazy stuff. Wait, and, stealing money? And, and, uh, and it ended up, huh? Stealing money? Food. Oh. Which technically, I mean, I guess in the end, I mean, yeah. you bought that food with money. But, yeah. Um, but but yeah, it got to the point where everybody was going that day at the house, and and he had a bunch of guns in his room, mm -hmm. and I was like, man, I was like, today's the day, and I was ready to go and just eat it all. And the only thing that actually um, uh, that kept me, it, it was literally God, because my mindset was that at this time in my life, the only person that would care is my mom, and eventually she would get over it. Mm, and dang. and what I realized in hindsight later is that she would have never got over that. Like taking your life and suicidal is is what it goes down to is the coward way out and is very, very selfish because you think that you leaving this earth is going to be better for everybody, but really it's going to end the problems for you in the physical, be way worse in the spiritual, mm. but then everybody that's left that loves you that is now left, they're going to suffer with that for the rest of their life. The ones that really love you. Some people, real, you're going to be forgot about. Mm. But like mom, dad, people that are close to you, yeah. they will relive that anniversary every day for the rest of their life. And I know now it's like I'm so sad uh, of what my mindset was then because I know that would have killed my mom, you know, yeah. like every day for the rest of her life. But when you're <clears throat> battling spirits and evil and stuff, it twists your mind and it makes you think crazy oh, stuff. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. um, and I remember... Uh, I was sitting on the edge of my bed and like that's when I was contemplating and thank God it was like it was just even thinking back to that moment gets kind of blurry but it was like I didn't end up doing it like thank God because now I'm here getting to talk to y'all about it and but what was wild is that later God mm -hmm. ended up giving me this revelation was that and now again fast forward years later but I had been in the church now now I'd been reading the word and all this stuff really actually really going hard with God and I remember I started meeting all these other people that were claiming the title Christian and they mm. were saying how they would always struggle with anxiety and depression and I was like what in the world because God took it from me like it wasn't in me no more Jesus done took it away so I'm like I remember I was praying with God one day and I remember I called out and I said God I said why did you take it from me but you still got them having it and as soon as I said it he spoke right to me and he said it's their prayer life Mm. I said, huh? And then in the moment, I realized, I was like, wow. Because I couldn't question it because that was the one thing that he kept me solid in was my prayer life. And that was what I noticed. And then I said, okay. I said, well, wait a minute. Because I knew it was God. Like, there's been times that I've heard my life when I've heard God. And it's like, I know exactly him. And this was one of them times where I knew without a doubt it was him. So I began to say, okay, well, I can't just go around and just telling people, oh, you need to pray more. You need to pray more. You know, you yeah, got to yeah. be relatable in a lot of stuff. So I said, okay, I know people are really big into science nowadays and stuff. So I said, let me look at the scientific aspect. Science says before you see any doctors, before you take any pills, before you get on any prescription, science says the best thing you can do for depression is to talk to somebody that you love. Uh, talk to somebody that you trust. And I said, oh, I said, well, that's not what I expected science to say. But they said the best way for depression is to talk to somebody that you love. And then the spiritual aspect, I said, oh, well, who better to talk to than the Father God? Who mm. loves you more than him? And then I know a lot of people are big into therapy nowadays and stuff. And same thing, when you go to them, you know, you're venting, you're talking to somebody. So the one thing that I found that was different is that 
when you talk to a therapist, it's great because you're getting it to get out. When you're talking to a loved one, it's great. You're getting it out. But people can't necessarily pour back into you where it stays with you. Some people can say some good advice to you and it'll sound good. And some people just give you sugar-coated answers because they're trying to be there for you, but they don't know what to say. They're just trying to make it sound good. And then when you go back to your house at night and you laying in bed and them lights are off, you back just you versus you again. Yeah. And what battles in that moment is always the spiritual. So when it comes to God, though, you're able to talk to God. And when you're pouring out, God is able to do something that nobody else is able to do. And he's able to take out things and put in things. Because when it comes time to the word, then as God continued to have me learn this, was that when you go and read the story about David, it said David praised God seven times daily and worshiped God three times daily. And then so it said that wherever David was, God was. Wherever God was, David was. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay. And then I read a letter in the scripture and it said, God inhabits the praises of his people. So every time where God was, David was, and David was, God was, because David was always creating an atmosphere for God to inhabit. And if you don't create an atmosphere for God to inhabit, you're going to have other things inhabit your atmosphere. Mm. It's going to leave room for the evil spirits and for them to come in and play with you. And they are always dominant whenever you are vulnerable. So if you have vulnerable moments, they're going to come in and mess with you more if you are not ushering in God's presence. Because we have the power to bring in God where he wants us to be. That's why he said on earth as it is in heaven. We have the ability to pull God down to here. But a lot of people don't because of the evil that's around them. And so what it ended up boiling down to is I would speak with thousands of people by now. And when I would talk with all of them and sit, they would all go and tell me their main struggles in life, what it ended up being was depression and anxiety. And then I'd get to the point of like, hey, man, well, tell me what your prayer life like. Mm. And every single one of them would give me the same exact answer. One would say they just don't have one. Right. Two would say, well, if I can be honest, it needs work. I ain't gonna lie. That was the majority. And then some people, they get real defensive. Prayer, I don't need you to tell me about prayer. I pray all the time. I pray to love it. They don't want to hear nothing because they automatically get offended. Because usually when people get offended, it's already they're not too firm and solid in what they're doing and believing in anyway. Yeah. So they feel offended, and that's their reaction to fight back. When there was no way even to fight back. It was a simple question. So people always tell on themselves real quick. So when it came time to it, what I found out is when I spoke to them is that every single one of them, what they did lack, none of them had an intimate consistent prayer life because some people even though they prayed all the time like bible says cease without prayer right it's cool pray in the shower pray on the way to work and all that yeah. but if you don't set up a time where you can get inconvenienced and you make convenient time for god yeah. and you get in his presence and bring him in you're going to continue to always have that struggle and what the thing is is that you have to be having that intimate daily consistent prayer life because if you are consistent daily as y'all notice y'all said you married right at the end of the day, when you make time for your wives at the end of the day, cell phones down, Netflix to the side, mm -hmm. and you are purposely giving her that intimate time, intimacy, ladies, at that time, intimacy does what now? It grows, right? You are now open. Yeah. You, the so you are now, okay, okay. So okay, so but, all right, serious moment. But in those times, that is when a woman or even a man is now open to give benefits to somebody else of a significant other that they wouldn't give to somebody else that they just know or just buddies with or whatever. It takes time building intimacy. And when that intimacy is built and it's actually focused on, benefits come out of it, right? Yep. And there's nobody that can give you more benefits than what God can give you. Mm, yeah. My yes, God! Because God. in the moment, in the moment, in the moment, Every relationship is only as strong as the communication. So if you're talking one day or two day out the week, that's whatever. But if yeah. you're talking seven days out the week, that's a best friend. That's somebody who you love. That's somebody who knows you and you know them. So every day working on that intimacy, that's where it's going to continue to grow. And I'm not talking about sexual intimacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That ain't that ain't that ain't this. There's a whole nother intimacy. It's yeah, that yeah. growing that close relationship. And the same thing works with God. Mm -hmm. And God is able to come in and he's able to remove things and replace it with himself. Absolutely. And when you stay in his presence, you're going to stay winning. Hey, that's good. That's, that's good, winning, man. Winning, winning. Hey, that's good, man. He Let's talk about. Right. Oh, yeah, he right. preaching for right. real. That's that's right. Right. He say he he preacher. Oh, you 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 a, you, a, you a pastor, right? No. Oh, okay. Teacher. <laughs> still, it's still, it's still. A I don't, great I don't think. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, you again. Titles, I don't yeah. care. But if you throw in that title, it's like, oh, must be doing something right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, All right, so my fault. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead, brother. Then, brother. I was gonna say, um, talk about this new project that you got coming out. Yes, sir. Oh, it's already it's out, brother. It's already out. Okay. I'm gonna need you to get with it. <laughs> I'm gonna need so, you to send it to me. So it came out. It came out May 25th. 
and uh, we started tour June 1st, and we've been on tour since. Uh, right now, we got almost up to uh, getting close to 30 cities, 30 dates. I'm so excited. We've been out traveling uh, through the West, through the Midwest, and through the South. Um, uh, it's been getting love on radio. Uh, mm. Still needed to get more, mm. apparently, y'all, since you said, yeah, you know, it's out. And, <laughs> and, but, but it's been amazing, though. Everywhere we've been able to go, um, I've been seeing uh, a lot of great feedback. Um, it's been great every place I've been able to go to. Um, next up, coming up, I got um, uh, uh, uh Got more dates coming up here in the South, and then I'll be up uh, in uh, Potosi, Wisconsin. I'm excited to go there. I've never been to Wisconsin yet, never so I'll be up it. there. And, um, and we've got other dates coming up that'll be around, and, and we're still booking more, so anybody out there that wants us to come, rather speak or music or both, um, you can always hit the email, booking at jnip.com. And, uh, but yeah, the album is out. I'm so excited because I got to produce nine out of the 12 songs, too, so mm. I'm super hype about crazy. that. Yeah, yeah, got to produce it, basically the whole project. Um, did the graphic design, too, so I got to actually make the project. Like I said, God showed me this back in 2018. Um, actually gave me the name and everything in 2018, and then I finally got to bring it to fruition today. Um, that graphic tough, man. Yeah, yeah, it is tough. Are there albums in between this? This one? Um, so I had, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, like from 2018 to Can't hear you this one? From, sorry. From 2018 to this one, have you had other albums? <laughs> no. So 2018 was when the last one came out, Resilient, because in that time, um, that is the span actually where I went homeless and all that, and music had to go on the back burner for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so 2018 was the album Resilient, and then it was like right afterwards, so God let me know like he wanted me to keep going right away, because he already gave me the idea and everything for the next album right when that one came out. So you've been working on this album since 2018? Uh, not really, because when I went that homeless time, it was like nothing was happening but survival. So, um, but not like, there was like some songs, like there's a song on there called Trap House, which I love. That song was actually wrote and everything and made in 2018, then it was just sitting. And then uh, the majority of the album got made the end of 2022 and the beginning of 2023. So and that's when it all got put together. So when God be, so just, it's so crazy though, cause I was, have, I was talking to somebody about this. Um, today when it comes to like purpose and stuff like that or like God showing us things and us being so like anxious about it and wanting to move uh, prematurely so when God gave you that album um, name how did you not move prematurely and like just other than the homeless things I know that took up a, a huge portion of it but mm -hmm. other than that how did him give you that name him give you this album cover you know that you're gonna put a new album out how did you not put it out prematurely so I believe every true leader which I believe everybody born is born to be a leader but again I believe walking and moving in alignment with the spirit is always going to be able to lead you to best because again you know getting into that prematurely that's that's when we get nervous that's when we get fleshy that's right. when we stop listening to God and we think oh my gosh in a big way that happens is because people are too busy watching other people instead of focusing on what God is telling them to do you know I, I feel like one of the big things of anxiety and all that happens because we're constantly comparing ourselves to what others are doing yeah. you know so if, if we stop comparing ourselves to other people but say if we do see other people's successes and we don't don't use it and turn it into anxiety yeah. and oh my gosh I'm not good enough or oh my look at them excelling and I'm just still here if we are able to go and turn that into a motivation and we and we get happy for them mm -hmm. yeah. and then we celebrate them instead of you know wanting us to be in that position yeah. that is where I believe also God honors as well mm -hmm. and then we will continue to not also just walk in the spirit but also walking in what the spirit has called us to be is humility mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so it it's definitely a process but but in the middle of it was because of I do my best not to be in in clickish things and I do my best not to pay attention to other people because I want to be focused on what God has been doing. Like God got me doing a lot. Like I got I already know like businesses and buildings I gotta build and books is coming out, all this other so if I'm focused on everybody else and I'm allowing that to try to go and you know mess up whatever God is yeah. calling me to do, that would go and make me move mm -hmm. prematurely. So I believe the more alignment you get with God is like I tell Jay all the time, when you keep the main thing the main thing, everything else is going to fall in line. The same thing when it comes to like the award shows and all this stuff. So many people make stuff like you said earlier, just to make a hit, just to get an award. Every single award show I've ever been in that I've announced, I've won. But that is not to brag or boast. That is to say, I didn't even care about them. 
I literally didn't try for them. I didn't care about them. And I just put it out there and I'm saying, hey, y'all can go vote if you want. And people vote. And then you walk away with it. And it's like, oh, snap. Each time I'm shocked and I'm just like, hey, awesome. That is great to be honored. And it's great that people make these platforms of these things. Mm -hmm. But when you go and make songs and when you go and live a life just because you're trying to get the glitter and the glam, you want to be on the red carpet, you want to be on, you know, trying to look good for other people and all this stuff. I can't tell you how many red carpet events I've been to just being me, still looking fly, but not no seat and all that. <laughs> And I get people coming up to me and they whisper in my ear and they're like, man, I wish I was you. And I'm talking people in three piece suits and all that because they hot, they uncomfortable and all this. Mm -hmm. And they and then I got other people coming to me be like, oh, hey, well, we need to get you to be like this. And I'm like, I'm going to be like me because right. the people that you did, they're coming to me and saying they wish they was me. So I'm good. I know something that you don't know, you know. Mm. So it's always walking in your own lane, always just being you, but walking in your own lane is that Romans 12 too, be not conformed to this world, but be yeah. ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when you do that, I believe that'll help you from moving prematurely, that'll help you to be in line with the spirit and you will be able to move in excellence and not just, because again, moving in prematurely, you're not gonna be able to put out your best. Mm. You continue to let God flow through and you create how you need to create and that's how you're gonna get your best material too, no matter how long it takes. Jesus yeah. waited 33 years, right? Well, I take that back. People always say that. Jesus said, don't you know about my father's business? And he was a kid. So, you know, Noah and all these other people, they waited all those years and stuff, right? So it's like, you know, what, it, what is the wait, you know? You never rush the process. The process sets you up for the promise. Facts. Mm. Hey, Jay Nims, you got that oil on you, no, bro. You really do. Listen. I ain't gonna lie. You got that oil on you, man. Yes, sir. You definitely My got God. that oil on you. You've been you been dropping. Find a, you don't find a lot of, you know, people in the CHA that talk like this. Yeah, no, that's, you can tell they're really being consecrated. They really that's been like true. being a prayer you, closet. Yes, for sure. you can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one hundred percent factual, yeah. man. But this is the thing too. Anybody that listens and pays attention, I hope they paid attention because that is everything. What what you just said, everything I was speaking. If they apply that, they would end up doing the same thing too. Because mm. everything that I'm speaking, it's not me. Like, even before I was over here sitting, we was listening, like, I, I pray and I ask, like, Holy Spirit leaders, whatever you want the conversation to be, be. Yeah. I expect to come here and just talk about the album. What was it? I talked about the album for 30 seconds at the end. But everything, I said, Holy Spirit, you lead the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was all about him, yeah. the whole thing, you know, Absolutely. and just how he worked through me. But that's the way I believe that we should all be. You know what I'm saying? It's like, Absolutely. you know, we get to share the, the tools that God is using through the gift, which is the music and the speaking, you know? Mm. But when you allow the gift to fully be flowed through you and used, People, I'm here right now because of the gift. Y'all don't care about me. At the end of the day, it's the gift that y'all care about. That's right? tough, Jay. Well, and, you, uh, Jay Nib, you can't say that. No, uh, of but we care. this is very, no, <laughs> I, no, I'm not saying you just don't care about my sisters, but I'm saying it, when, it, when it comes down to general, like y'all's radio station, yes, y'all got people that care about you, but it's the gift of what y'all are yeah, bringing. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. At the end of the day, people wouldn't pay to fly me places and bring me places because I'm just dude in flesh. They pay for the gift. Yeah. They want to hear the gift. You know, every preacher, every pastor, every person that's got a business, they pay for the gift. And when you know what your gift is and you walk confidently in it and you allow God mm. to lead it, your gift is going to take you everywhere. What do you say? My gift will take you in front of great kings and great men. The gift. Yeah. Not you as a person. Facts, your facts, gift. facts, facts, facts. So let them know where they could cop the whole album, man. Let them know. Let Everywhere. Them know. Go get it. Wherever you listen to music. Or you can go to my website at www.j-nibb.com. J-nibb.com. Find all the new tour dates coming up. Um, different places if you want to come have me uh, speak. Rather, it's to teach. Um, I do a lot of teaching and music business as well, where you can actually get your music fully in the game and get paid. And being able to just come out and just teach on different life events too or for a concert. You do all the booking there. Everything, social media, just Jake and I, BB. That's Where all. are you most excited to perform? Um, honestly, upcoming, I'm excited to go up to uh, Potosi, Wisconsin, because I haven't been to Wisconsin yet. They booked me up there to be the keynote speaker and the entertainer for the evening. So oh, again, that's dope. Yeah, you walk in the Two gift, time. you know, and, and it's dope because now I'm going up there for literally both gifts, you know. I get to be Two the time. keynote speaker and the actual performer, the, the entertainer. That's so it's really great. Far. My God! Yeah. God. But it ain't that far on a flight. <laughs> so, but it, but it's dope. I'd say that's that's the one I'm excited about coming up because I've never been there yet. Um, but then other dates that we're working because I'm I already talked with God and in this this tour I know I'm hitting 40 dates and it's going to be international. So I know I'm excited to hit uh, Africa and Australia. I believe mm. those are the two continents that I'm going to go and get to first. Um, but I'm really excited about that. So yeah. That's dope. Yeah, but I'm excited about everywhere. Dope. Rather it's a big place or a tiny place. There's one soul there, or we going in like this 20,000. Crazy. Yes, sir. Man, I'm super excited for you, man. You got to pull back up on us, man. Listen, I'm ready whenever y'all ready. You in Atlanta? Uh, 
Yeah. All right. I'm 30 yeah, minutes yeah. from here. We can come. Oh, yeah, Listen, yeah, every yeah, topic yeah. we talk about, we can talk about it all. We can, I'm I'm ready. Yeah, we're going to dive in some more next time around, yeah. man. I'm super excited, man. And um, you enjoyed yourself? I did, man. Um, I'm excited to finally be here and hanging out with y'all. Uh, and, and I appreciate y'all, for real. Man, for, we appreciate the, you, yeah, bro. Yeah, for the platform, man, everybody, you know, no matter the, even if y'all had one listener, you know what I'm saying? I, I love that y'all have put the time in, you're putting the money in, God is, you know, going and blessing y'all, and all of y'all have been kind, all of y'all have been cool. Uh, man, my man greeted me, like, before I even got all the way down the hallway and stuff. So it's cool the atmosphere y'all got and that you're truly being able to walk how God would want y'all to walk, yeah. you know? And, and it's really dope. And I appreciate, you know, any platform of anybody that's trying to continue to use their gift to get my gift and other people's gifts out to continue to do what the kingdom has called us to do. So I'm a fan hey, of y'all. Appreciate you, man. Big For facts, real. man. Flow Mafia, you know the vibes, man. Go ahead and tap in with Jay Nibs and cop the album, man, In My Own Lane. Make sure you, sh make sure you show him that Flow Mafia love. You know how we do it, man. You know how we do Flowradioshow.com. Also, you did say where they can follow you on socials, did you? Yeah, yeah, everything, all socials are just J and I yeah, B B. Yeah. And for any booking, it's just booking at J N I B B dot com or go to the website. Big facts, big facts, big facts, man. Flowradioshow.com, man. You know the live the vibes. We live and certified, certified. man. Tap in with J Nibs. Nibs. Yeah. Fresh leftovers. Left JS3 Nation. We're gonna catch y'all next week. Peace. <laughs>